Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net with two more quick workflow tips. Keeping organized in After Effects is never easy, especially when you're working under tight deadlines. As a result, you start to get folders, files, and layers that have generic names. And while you're on the project, you may remember what each one of these things are for, but you might not. And if you have to return to the project weeks or months later, you almost definitely won't remember what's what. And if someone else has to pick up the project, they'll probably be really confused. But what many users don't know is that After Effects allows you to rename things. For example, if I select a folder here in the project window and hit enter on my keyboard, I can change the name of the folder to whatever I need. And not just that, I can even select a composition and do the same thing quickly and easily. This is normally something for which you'd go into the composition settings. Furthermore, you can even select footage such as a QuickTime movie and rename it for the entire project. So if you have multiple instances of footage that's been interpreted differently, for example, maybe a different frame rate or looping, you can give it a different name. This is not the same thing as going into the timeline and changing the name there. That only affects that one instance of the layer. Also, you can not only change the names of folders, compositions, and footage, but After Effects also gives you the ability to change the name of an effect. So if your effect is doing something important that you want to take special care to remember, you can change it from its generic After Effects name to something that will remind you of its purpose. Now, how much do I use this? A lot, actually. I always like to change the names of solids so that I can tell what they're doing without having to look at their keyframes or effects. And if I've changed the name of a layer and I want to see its original source name, I can just click the top of the layer name column and it becomes the source name column revealing that information. And speaking of column buttons, do you remember the days of yesteryear and After Effects 6.5 and lower where we had the switches and modes button? Ah, those were the good old days. High-speed internet was prohibitively expensive and only the wealthy had flat panel monitors, but no matter who you were, you could easily switch between the switches and modes column. Ah, the good old days. Well, with progress, there's always some sacrifice, and it appears that in updating the interface, Adobe left that feature out. Or did they? Well, we do have these buttons here in the lower left corner that allow you to open each of these two panels either alone or side by side. But that's really not what I'm looking for. I'm losing valuable seconds every day just switching between these two columns, and that's cutting into my quality of life, you know? Well, maybe not, but it's still annoying. But before you get on the phone and demand a refund from Adobe, it turns out that the button is still there. It's just hidden. So if you press the space below the column, you know, the area that used to be the actual button, lo and behold, it works. So the next time you need to switch between these two columns, don't waste time with these newfangled doodads here at the bottom. Just use the hidden switches and modes button. Over the course of a day, you might save yourself a minute of time or more that you can use to do something valuable with your life, like, I don't know, watching more television. Hey, don't stop watching TV, otherwise I'm out of a job. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net.